We're back with Lynn manuel Miranda, and congratulations on Tick, Tick, Boom. It's receiving fantastic reviews. So this is based on uh, the writer of Rent, but this is not about this part of his career, uh, or that part of his career, I should say. This was about something earlier. This was about a failure. Yeah, he, um, Jonathan Larson was, um, was an aspiring uh, composer. I can't relate at all. Um, <laughs> and he spent his 20s um, trying to, first of all, he tried to do an adaptation of 1984. Um, couldn't get the rights. He said, I'll write my own dystopia. He spent his 20s writing this musical called Superbia. Um, and everyone basically said, it's really interesting. You're very talented. What else do you have? And he said, I spent my 20s writing this. And I think he processed that loss um, and the fact that no one wanted to produce it by writing this one-man show called Tick, Tick, Boom. And he performed it as a rock monologue with a band all over the village and all over New York. Um, and he basically was like, it, it was him processing spending his 20s on something nobody wanted to see. And as a result, it's a brilliant sort of portrait of this great artist as a young man and, and figuring out whether he wants to proceed in this line of work or not. And Rent is still way down on the horizon. And you were how old when you first see this? So I was 17 when I saw Rent. Uh, I saw the original cast for my 17th birthday from the back row of the Nederlander Theater. And that was the show that made me want to write musicals. It was the first really contemporary musical I ever saw. And then um, after Larson's passing, um, it was commissioned uh, to, to be turned into an off-Broadway show. They basically turned into a three-person off-Broadway show, and I saw that. Now I'm a senior theater major. I'm like, I'm a theater major. It's just after September 11th. Like, what do I have to offer the world? Um, and I went and saw um, this brilliant musical directed by Scott Schwartz, starring Raul Esparza, um, and it was basically this sneak preview of my 20s. It was this brilliant kind of wrestling with what are we meant to be doing with our time? And it was even more specific and brilliant to me um, than my experiencing Rent at 17. And so it's been sitting in me like ever since. Uh, and and um, I was thrilled to get to direct the film adaptation. You get to direct it and you get to take this core story, but obviously because it's film, in some degrees you get to make it bigger. And one way that you seem to make it grander and sort of a tribute to Jonathan is all these Broadway cameos. Yeah. And and it sort of goes back to what you're saying about the speed of thought, right? Like you get to do, you get to internalize this person and it must have been so cool to reach out to the Broadway community and explain why it's important to do a cameo in this film. Sure, and half of the folks that people are considering cameos, they're not cameos to me. They're just like great New York actors that I want to be. You know, you know from this, you've got Richard Kind in every third thing. Absolutely. Richard Kind is in our movie you too. You can't say no to Richard you Kind. You can't say no to Richard Kind. And he Kind's. will call you. Yes. <laughs> Um, but you know, it's it's. Um, I, I just wanted great New York actors to be in this great New York story. Um, but there are elements to it that you know, Jonathan wasn't never got to see his success. You know, he passed away the night before Rent's first public performance. And the goal at every stage was what would Jonathan Larson do, um, and what would Jonathan Larson want to see. And the film is an opportunity to go to New York in 1990. That sort of post. Koch pre-Giuliani weirdo time in New York that I remember as a child um, and, and populate it with Jonathan's heroes. I mean, that was sort of the goal at every step of the way. One cameo that I think people were very excited to see is your father. <laughs> sure. Yeah. When you talk about New York royalty. Yeah. Luis Miranda When Jr. you get Luis, I'm like, is that the Luis? <laughs> they, they booked Luis? <laughs> <laughs> no, but how is your dad to work with as when you're the director? <laughs> He's... Um, it, well, I could have made it easier on myself because the scene he's in um, is this uninterrupted, it's like my only Scorsese take. <laughs> it's this like long dance sequence in a New York lobby. Um, and I also wanted it to play like they're moving in slow motion. So all the dancers are dancing at 1.75 speed. Um, so my dad has a really specific cue and it goes by really fast. It's like, hello to the Mr. Doorman, who looks like Captain Kangaroo, and then wave. And daddy, wave. Um, and he's got like this really tough kind of musical. And he'd be like, I got it, I got it, leave me alone. You can't direct your parents. No, no, no. You know, I, I know Martin Scorsese put his mom in like a lot of his yeah. Movies, I don't know how he did it because I was just hearing, like, around after take five, my dad was like, how many more? Because <laughs> I have a real job. Also, Stephen Sondheim was a very important person in Jonathan's life. Yes. And uh, Bradley Whitford plays him. 
I imagine that's uh, something you don't take on lightly to play Stephen no, Sondheim. You you made it very difficult for me because in the great Co-op the Musical, I don't know if you've seen Co-op the Musical the produced by now, Mr. Very Seth popular Meyers, show. dozens of fans in dozens the audience. Dozens of fans. Um, um, John Mulaney plays yeah, Mulaney Sondheim. did a very good Sondheim. He did a brilliant Sondheim. Yeah. So, you know, we luckily we were in a different age bracket of Sondheim, so we cast Bradley uh, as Sondheim. And Sondheim liked it, right? He's, he liked the performance. Yes, he, he wrote me, you treated me gently and royally, for which I am grateful. Um, but he had a note, um, which is there's, there's a moment in which uh, the character of Sondheim leaves a message uh, for, for Jonathan Larson and... I forget what the sentence was, but he was like, I would never say that. Uh, can I rewrite my voicemail message? So he thought the way you presented him in the film, even though it was him being kind, was maybe a little cliche. Yeah, th this one moment, this one sentence, yeah. it was like, I think you have a bright future in this business. And he was like, I would never say <laughs> bright future in this business. And so he said, can you rewrite it? And if you can't get the actor back to record the voicemail, I'll, I'll, I'll record myself. And I was like, I can't get him. <laughs> I'm sorry, would you please? Um, and so he, so we have like a rewrite from Sondheim in our movie, um, and it's his voice on the voicemail to Jonathan Larson. Now that's this cosmic reaching. Now that's a pretty good years. cameo, yeah, as you know, a, with all respect to Louise. Yeah, it's a, it's, that's how you do Allegro. <laughs> that's how you do it. Hey, thank you so much for being here. Congrats on both films, back. you guys. That's Lin Manuel Miranda. Tick, tick, boom. Available on Netflix and Tonto theaters everywhere tomorrow.